I'm used to eating burgers and fries and stuff. So, so you're a child. Yeah. <laughs> I miss your cheese. Oh, this is harder than I thought. So recently, I watched the documentary The Game Changers on Netflix, which is all about how a plant-based diet can improve your athletic performance. So I know that the athletes in the documentary saw a huge difference when they cut animal products out of their diet, but I was curious to see if this would actually work for some of my friends at the office. So I decided to ask two of my most athletic friends, Betsy and Troy, to go vegan for 30 days to see how it would affect their performance. I usually exercise about four to five days a week, and that routine can be anywhere from a HIIT workout to yoga or Pilates to a long run. I oftentimes play beach volleyball, so I really try to find ways to stay active on a daily basis. I'm really excited to see how this plant-based diet will affect my energy levels. As someone who kind of has hectic and crazy schedules from time to time, I find my energy levels consistently fluctuating. I'm really hoping that I'm able to maintain my athletic performance, feel really good, get creative in the kitchen, get my hands dirty. My current diet is a lot of meat. It's probably 90% meat. Growing up, I played football through college, and I was always told, you gotta get your protein, and the way to get protein was eating meat, so, and that's how you get the gains. So yeah, that's what I've always done. I typically do CrossFit about four to five times a week. It's definitely a high intensity workout. The thing I'm nervous about for this challenge is that I won't have enough energy during the workouts. I never cook, so now I'm gonna be having to make my own meals. My family has a history of type two diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. So I'm excited to see if this can help bring all my numbers down. So Troy and I are on our way to One Medical in West Hollywood. We're gonna get some blood work done, our blood pressure taken. That way we can compare our results before and after the challenge. Yep. Just left One Medical. Now we're gonna head and do our physical fitness test. It's gonna help us measure our athletic performance and we're gonna do this again after the challenge to see if we improve. So I just got back from Ralph's. I needed to just get a couple things so that I can get through the first couple days. Uh, it's a lot harder than I thought going by myself. I'm trying to read things and so for now I just got some uh, Beyond sausage, some Beyond burgers, and I'm definitely gonna be cooking and stuff, but for now, just to get through the first few days, I'm like, okay. In the beginning of the challenge, it was a little hard for me to realize like, oh, I can't eat that, like I can't have that, especially being a tasty producer and being surrounded by so much incredible food and delicious food all day. And really realizing that a lot of the stuff I eat is not plant-based at all or has very little nutritional value. But I just tried to get excited for the food I was making myself and I knew that, hey, this is making me feel really good. Just finished uh, first workout um, since switching to plant-based. Um, energy was a little low, but I also haven't really been eating enough, so I just gotta figure all that out. Okay, so this might be a little TMI, but I just finished a HIIT workout and I was farting like crazy. I'm assuming that this is a side effect of the plant-based diet. So I just want to apologize to all those who are just working out next to me. I really hope that this is temporary. So I feel like a lot of diets out there are very anti-carb or low-carb. Mm -hmm. People see carbs as like this horrible thing. Yeah. Is that a myth? Is that factual? So carbs are very important as an energy source, especially for athletes, because our body stores carbs as glycogen. And so when you're exercising, your body gets its fuel from its glycogen stores. So once your glycogen is depleted, you start to fatigue faster. So if you're not eating carbs, or if you're on a low carb diet, you can imagine that your glycogen stores are gonna be already baseline low. Then when you start working out, they're gonna be even faster depleted. So it's really important that you have complex carbs an hour before you work out, like whole grains, beans, lentils, legumes. Make sure you're picking the whole foods as opposed to refined carbs, like white rice, white bread crackers to give you enough energy to keep your workout going. Is it possible to get enough protein from a vegan diet? Plant protein is more ideal than animal protein for a few different reasons. In the animal proteins, you get cholesterol and saturated fat. So cholesterol only exists in animal products. In the same way that 
fiber only exists in plant foods. So when you're eating animal protein, you're getting that cholesterol, you're getting that saturated fat. Two things that lead to heart disease if eaten in excess, whereas your plant proteins naturally do not have cholesterol, but have little to none saturated fat. So the more protein dense foods are your beans, lentils, nuts, seeds, and whole grains. But vegetables, even to a certain extent, have a smaller amount of protein. So you really don't have to worry about not meeting your protein needs on a vegan diet, as long as you're eating a wide variety of foods. Starting off week two, worked out this morning, felt really good, crushed the workout, recovered pretty quick, made a little breakfast, more oatmeal, some like fruits and stuff in it. Start off week two with a bang. After meeting with Delilah, it definitely became easier to think of meal ideas because she kind of provided me a nice foundation of easy items to incorporate into every meal. I was feeling more confident in my meal prep and actually really having a lot of fun with it too. And my husband loved it. One of BT's favorite foods is pesto. So I just made some vegan pesto that I'm gonna have him try. I basically substituted Parmesan cheese for nutritional yeast. It tastes exactly the same. Like you think it tastes exactly the same? Yeah. I'll put that on everything. I noticed a change my energy levels come week two. I really noticed during my HIIT workouts or doing a long distance run that I was taking fewer breaks and that I felt like I could go longer. I could have probably done a few more reps. I felt like I could maybe run farther. It was easier for me to get up in the mornings. I didn't feel like I had to like sleep in or like hit the snooze button. It was a really fun change for me to see. One of my close friends, Cassandra, she really, really helped me a lot with this because she took me food shopping the first time. She was just explaining everything to me. She was reading all the backs for me, like showing me what's what. My homegirl, Cassandra, made me a vegan dinner. Sweet potatoes, tempeh, and Brussels sprouts. I am eating it very slow. <laughs> I'm like, so do you not like it? I do like it, I do like it. <laughs> I'm used to eating burgers and fries and stuff, so. So you're a child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never would have ate Brussels sprouts before, and they were actually really good. I just got back from a really long run. Usually after a long run, I'll come home and make a nice smoothie for myself. Today we gotta change some things up because hashtag plant-based. I got some oat milk instead of Greek yogurt or regular milk, almond butter, some flaxseed, and some plant-based protein powder that a friend of mine gave me. Really good. Honestly, it doesn't taste too different than what I usually make. Easy substitutes. Just finished my first real cooked meal. I, I housed it, all gone. Was Pretty damn good. I gotta give myself some credit for that. And I gotta say, I'm gonna put that I'm a chef now. I gotta start telling people that, that I can throw down in the kitchen. I was just cooking a bunch of different things and trying out new things, and it was cool. And I was surprised at how good everything was coming out. Once I started eating enough, my energy levels went way up. I just felt great. I was like getting right back on the barbell, getting right back on the pull-up bar, whatever I needed to do, get out for the run. So I just felt myself getting to it quicker and improving. And it's not like I was working out any more than I was before. The only thing I changed was my diet. Living in Los Angeles provides me with a lot of delicious plant-based menu items. Rachel just dropped off some vegan tacos for me to try. It really tastes like an El Pastor taco. Maybe it's because I haven't eaten meat in like three weeks now, but like this looks like just like meat, right? I was introduced to a new protein powder, which is a pea protein. And I was so skeptical about trying it, but I actually really liked it. And so I ordered more for myself and I'm gonna keep using it. So Rachel allowed us a cheat day because she knew Thanksgiving was coming up. One of the days I had a, a Friendsgiving, I think there was like, maybe like one or two vegan options. And I was like, okay, this is the day. I didn't go too crazy, but when I got home like later on that night, I kind of felt a little shitty, you know? Like, so for me, it kind of was like, okay, I did it. It wasn't as good as I remembered it all being. And that helped me get through the rest of the month. Last week of the challenge, I'm just finishing up my weekly long distance run. And I gotta say, I am feeling really good. Energy levels are definitely up and I might even tack on an extra half mile, so pretty pumped about that. I just finished a CrossFit class. Three rounds, uh, 30 squat cleans at 95 pounds, 30 pull-ups, and 800 meter run. It took me about just over a half hour to do it. Probably would have took me at least like closer to 40 minutes or so, like that 38 minute mark. It's plants, they got power, man. 
So we got your results back. We have blood pressure and lab results from before and after when you guys were seen at One Medical. Okay. So, Troy, you want to start? <laughs> All right, so your before blood pressure was 138 over 86. Mm -hmm and your after blood pressure was 138 over 90. And they're both in kind of the borderline range, um, okay. almost high blood pressure. Betsy, your before blood pressure was 108 over 72, and your after blood pressure was 120 over 80. So yours also went up a little bit, but but yeah, still totally normal. This can be a lot of different factors affecting this. We had talked about close to when you'd had this after blood pressure taken that you had had kind of a big bowl of like ramen and salty right. soup. Eating a vegan diet alone doesn't necessarily guarantee that it's going to improve or decrease your blood pressure. Um, there are just a lot of other factors that can come into play, like salt intake, alcohol intake, stress, caffeine levels, all that stuff can affect blood pressure. Let's go over your cholesterol results. Betsy, your LDL cholesterol started off at 84 and dropped a little bit to 75. Oh, cool. Yeah. Troy, your LDL cholesterol was at 105, a little bit higher than we want to see it, and then it went down to 85. So dropped that by 20, 20 points. Wow. <laughs> yep. That's crazy. So that's definitely a good sign and definitely shows that eating more veggies and eating more fruits can have a great effect yeah. on your cholesterol. <laughs> can going plant-based really help us in our recovery when we're working out? Does it give us more energy? No. There are some studies to show that going plant-based can reduce believe it or not, inflammation. And so there is some information you know, out there saying that if we reduce inflammation in our body, our muscles um, will recover quicker and therefore it makes us you know, better athletes. And it doesn't necessarily show that you have to be vegan in order to get those results, but definitely benefits to eating mm -hmm. overall plant-based. Exercise isn't everything. It's definitely a huge component of it, but you kind of see here with your results, especially with yours, Troy, um, with your cholesterol dropping so much, that diet is a pretty big factor mm -hmm. in our health and preventing you know, long-term diseases like heart attack and stroke. And so it's kind of multifactorial in terms of improving your health overall. So I have your before and after fitness test results. So the pre-challenge fitness test, you guys finished at the exact same time actually, in three minutes and 42 seconds. At the end of the month, we took the exact same fitness test again, and this time, Betsy, you finished in three minutes and 17 seconds. And Troy, you finished in three minutes and eight seconds. Damn. And I actually so like, Crushed it. And I felt like good after too. Troy, you beat your time by 34 seconds. Yeah. And Betsy, you beat your time by 25 seconds. I will take it. All the gas was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What surprised me the most during this challenge was the fact that I really didn't crave meat as much as I thought I would. By the end, even when I was around that type of food, I wasn't really interested in eating it. I don't plan to be full-fledged vegan, but seeing the results of this challenge and knowing how good I really did feel is certainly tempting for me to cook as plant-based as I can, maybe like Sunday through Thursday. And I think that's a step in the right direction and I'm excited. A big thing that I took away from this was the fact that I got into the habit of cooking versus just like constantly going to get takeout. So now I've been, you know, going food shopping and cooking, I'm prepping my meals and stuff, and I feel like a real adult finally. The fact that my cholesterol dropped 20 points really made me feel like I am more in control with my health. It's not just, well, your family has a history of this, so. So that's just really impressive to me, and it is motivating for me to continue to eat more plant-based meals.